never heard that, but you know, that's the origin of Cap. Um, I'm gonna have to look this up. I'm gonna look very careful. Right. We have to follow, yeah. we have to have you know, be true to yourself. You know, you don't have to. And when I came back the place was a mess, so I knew I was best. <laughs> Deep in here now. Now it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Me too. Good. Yeah. Good. And, yeah, yeah. And applying the recovery, I thought. All right. Welcome to the Machine Foundation's Get in the Herd podcast here in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, we want to do a quick shout out to our sponsors. Um, up first is the Seed Institute. Seed Institute. If you have any. Um, questions about trying to get some trainings they specialize in trainings and they also help individuals start their own llc's they specialize in startup businesses they are minority owned as well so reach out to them 804-939-0541 and then next up we have the farley center that was my um angel on my shoulder there (laughs) We have the Farley Center. Um, they are a treatment center located in Williamsburg, Virginia. If you have any loved ones or anyone that needs some services for substance use disorder and our mental health, uh, give them a call. They have a detox and they take commercial insurances. 804-638-7329. Kelly Eason is the name of their coordinator. Give them a call the Farley Center. Thank you, Farley Center, for that sponsorship. And then uh, up next, we have Rooted Hair Studios. They are located in Colonial Heights, Virginia. If you give them a call and mention McShin, you'll get 10% off your next hairdo. So go on, get your hair done. Rooted Hair Studio, 804-919-3851. They are located in Colonial Heights, Virginia, and they are locally owned as well. So they're not um, a... um. Uh, 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 whatever commercial brand um, studio they're locally owned. So give them a call um, 804-919-3851 Mention code McShin, get 10% off. <clears throat> and then we have one last sponsor um, who wanted to remain anonymous. Um, so we do want to shout them out for that sponsorship. They um, sponsored the podcast. So I don't have anything to sponsor. Sponsor, I don't have anything to, to say for them. Lunch today. Yes, <laughs> but we do want to shout them out and say, um, you know, thank you for that, um, and we appreciate that, and we appreciate all of our sponsors. And with that, uh, we are going to get into our next episode. And get in the herd podcast, award winning podcast, by the way. Um, <laughs> I am your co-host Monique. I'm the community engagement coordinator here, and I'm joined today by a guest co-host. Hey, I'm Laura. I am a CPRS. I work with the women's program and my little headphones are falling off. Okay. Did you mean to sound so cute when you yeah. said that? <laughs> it was adorable. Uh, I think they're good now. Okay, so today is really special. All right. I met this young lady back in 2022 um, in Pamunkey Regional Jail. So for those of you that don't know, on Mixtion Foundation, we do have a pretty large judicial program. Um, we are in two regional jails where we have Mixtion pods. Um, one, Pamunkey's in the Hanover area, um, and RSW, which is up in Front Royal. Um, and then we also, you know, go into Henrico East and West every Tuesday and bring a live podcast to you, um, as you probably know. So when Nona here uh, was... Hey. Yes, was in the <laughs> Pamunkey Regional Jail, and she just celebrated two, two whole people. years. Let's go and sustain recovery. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes. So, Anona, let's get to cracking. <laughs> I hate what so much. Can you kind of tell me um, and tell viewers how you were introduced to the McShun Pod um, at Pamunkey Regional? Yeah, it was like one of those programs that they, you know, offered to you. Oh, you had to do it. You had to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna hear <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then, um, so yeah, they offered it to us. And I was like, all right, well, what is that? Because I know nothing about nothing. I was just there. And uh, at first, they, they sold me with the time off and donuts. I'm not going to lie. Okay. okay. Time I off never, and donuts. I was I, like, all right, I'll sign up for it. Yeah. 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 Donuts. Everyone likes Dunkin'. Yeah, well, it was food. That wasn't yeah. there, you know. So yeah, that, that, facts. That was, Any that was food good. that you don't regularly get. Yeah, um, trays mm-hmm. in the commissary. Yep, and you got out yourself for a little bit, you know. 
to another room. Yeah. <laughs> there was perks to that already. Yeah. <laughs> so I did that and uh met people my nigga over here, a few other people that helped me out. Oh, because going in there I actually learned like I didn't have to do what I was doing. Yeah. Which I never knew there was anything other than to do that. Right. So, but I'm not going to lie. I didn't really believe it when I was first there. So I just had to keep going back. Right. To figure it out. You know. So what kind of, how long were you in the pod um, going to these days, you know, these groups and stuff until you were kind of like, okay, maybe I can kind of see what they're saying. Mm, I think it was at least. It was over a month, like two months. Okay. Yeah, because everybody kept coming in and they were happy and, you know, kept saying the same thing over and over again. So I'm like, all right, well, it might be true. Right. <laughs> so, right. Might as well listen a little bit harder instead of just, you know, trying to take time off, actually right. start paying attention and listening to what everybody was telling me to do. And what was, how, first of all, how long were you, were you in Pamunkey that time? Uh, I spent 10 months in. Okay. Yeah, like eight months there and two months in another jail. Okay. okay. So, oh my gosh. Y'all, I remember <laughs> when I met Winona. So, like, you know, I'm going in there. First of all, I was so nervous. I was so <laughs> nervous going in there. A, because, like, are you sure that these doors are going to open back up? Right. Yeah. What? Valid. And, like, you hear the click. Oh, when you go in, just <laughs> so, about it. you know, so yeah. I was like, oh, my God, Are, do they know what do they know that I'm supposed to be here and, and get out? And and, you know, you go into this this room. And I think when I met you, there was maybe like eight women or yeah, it wasn't that many. It wasn't a bunch. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a bunch. And um, and it was like intimidating because um. Myself, I think I had just celebrated a year. Mm -hmm, um, so. And, you know, they're looking for this inspiration. And and uh, I didn't really know if I could break it. You know, I was like, um, I'm still living in sober living. And I'm still, you know, <laughs> you, you get to a point where, like, you feel like you are supposed to hit these milestones. And you're supposed to have these things and, like, goals accomplished. And mm -hmm. so I was like, yeah, man, I'm like, you know, I'm still living in sober living. And. Um, but I'm working here and, and, um, and for real, I felt, and actually I still stay connected to that. Uh, there, another, there was another girl in there, mm -hmm. um, the, the dancer and, um, yeah. and That's it was, I got her too. yeah, yeah. yeah. So if the there were certain people, I was just like, man, like I can see it. I see that you want something different, mm -hmm. but you're just like, not really sure if like, that's the route. Like, that seems a little boring. I was like, yeah, life can be a little boring, a little monotonous. <laughs> but I promise it's better. It's better. It's better it than, is. like, the highs and lows. Like, those lows get so low. And I remember you being very attentive. Like, you were attentive. That's right. Yeah. Attentive. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I remember you being very attentive <laughs> and like taking notes and um because it was a mixture. There were some people there that I could tell, you know, maybe it hadn't really quite clicked yet. I felt like you were like open, mm -hmm. you know, um, maybe not completely sold on the idea of recovery, but you were listening. You were listening, you were taking notes. Um and I really, really, really hoped that you were going to come um, sh to mission right when you got out. And I did. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I did that. The way that I was just, oh, my, just coming in and then seeing you, mm -hmm. seeing you, I was like, oh, my gosh, she did it. Oh, my gosh, she did it. And I will say she worked very hard because when you got out, you had to go to intensive. Mm -hmm. And I didn't so, even understand that at first. I was like, I literally was just in intensive. Right. <laughs> right. You go, you know, she came, you know, yeah. from being in jail. And then it's like, you you think you're going to get out, go into sober living, have your phone, mm -hmm. do whatever, ride around town. No, you got to do 28 days of intensive. But I'm glad they did it that way, though. Me too. I am. Because I could, if they would have gave me a little bit more freedom mm -hmm. when I didn't have, mm -hmm. I can't say I would have made it this far. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I'm not sure. 
Right. So I'm glad they did it that way to get me to introduce me into it instead of just shove me into it. Because mm-hmm. that could be overwhelming, mm-hmm. you know, overwhelming and like overstimulating a little bit. So how did you, how do you go about getting and securing a bed once you're kind of coming up on the ends of your time in Pamunkey? How did you ensure that you would have a bed? Did you have to call? You, I, I'm not part of the judicial <laughs> team. I'm not part of the reentry team. Yeah. Um, so it's something that I, I wonder because some people, you know, they they're in the pods and they're in the programs mm-hmm. in jail. And then, you know, they don't they don't come. Um, is it difficult or? I wouldn't say it was difficult because we had Mandy that was coming in mm-hmm. and I constantly kept in touch with her. I got her number. Uh, she told me to write like my life story and she would bring it to McShane and do that. And of course she made me speak my life story before it was over yeah, with. Lovely. Well, yeah, lovely. Yeah. Gotta yeah. love it. Yeah, but that's okay. Cause almost everybody cried. So it was crying with me. So oh, I was like, okay, right. I'm crying, you're oh, crying. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't bad. So no matter like when I thought it was closer to my time, I'd call Mandy. She'd always answer the phone and she had everything here set up for me. So I just kept in contact with her and it worked that way. Did we come and pick you up? No, my or, son picked me up. Oh, your mm-hmm. son picked you up? He came all the way from up north Aww. to come get me to drop me off. Aww. Yep. That's so incredible. <laughs> See, I think I think that's such a huge benefit when someone is able to go mm-hmm. straight from jail, straight to get help in a program. Because we know statistically when people leave jail, um, a lot of people, you know, get some sustained recovery time in jail, you know, and it's mm-hmm. difficult. Some people will, you'll hear sometimes people talk about, you know, just how easy it is to not sustain your recovery Mm -hmm. in jail. Sometimes it sounds like it's even easier to not in the jail than it is outside of the jail sometimes. It's always right there. Right. And and you're confined, you're bored, Mm -hmm. same schedule every day. Um, So it's like, you know, commend you for that. It's, it's, it's hard. And um, but when they get out and they don't have somewhere to go, mm. we know statistically that is their highest rate of uh, their highest times of having overdose uh, deaths. So for That's why I'm glad I came straight here. Right. If they would if I would have had any time, I would have been doing the same thing I was doing before I got locked up because that's all I knew. Right. So I knew where to go, who to be with, who to call. But. Those people's in places I did not need to be because I wouldn't have made it back here. Right. I'm so glad that you're here. Me too. Love you. And <laughs> and that kind of leads me to Laura, aka Bunny. Um, Laura, I really wanted her to co-host with me today because she has like this incredible story. If you haven't heard, she kind of spoke about it a little bit on one of our past Women's Wednesday podcasts. So go back on the YouTube channel and um, look for that. Um, but incarceration was a big part of your story. It was, it was, I, um, before I came to McShin, I was in jail at Western Virginia regional jail, which is in Roanoke County outside of Salem, um, for about a year and a half. Um, I was arrested on a violation of my probation and, um, eventually went to court before the judge and he ordered me to do the alpha program, which is the program that they have there. And then after that, I eventually got released to come to McShin. But I knew the judge wasn't going to release me unless I had somewhere to go. Um, And thank God, you know, my lawyer and my mom found out about the McShin Foundation Mm -hmm. and this is where I came. Um, But, you know, it's, I think it is so important to have somewhere to go, right? When you get out, one of my, I remember when I had a court day approaching that wound up getting continued, but I had planned at the time if Mm -hmm. I was going to be released that I would go stay with a friend of mine that I'd met there. Her name was Tanya and she actually did overdose right when she got out and she died. Wow. And, um, and so it was of course just absolutely devastating. She was a really beautiful person. Um, but it, I was scared to get out because I knew that 
the only reason I had as much clean time in there as I did was because I was locked mm-hmm. in the jail, you know, and I didn't trust myself to get out and be on the street and be able to make the right kind of decisions. So, um, so I wound up being court ordered to McShin mm-hmm. and Joyce came and picked me up all the way from, all the way from Roanoke. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Joyce. Shout out Roanoke. Joyce. Yeah. <laughs> we had a great, yeah, we had a great time. She picked me up. We went and had pizza. Nice. Yeah. And you got food. And I got food. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's always the food. It, it yeah, is always the food. The yeah. food. Pizza, it's always too. The food. It was so good. So I'm a vegetarian, and they don't have much for vegetarian yeah. trays. Yeah, <laughs> so I was getting a lot of um, peanut butter and jelly yeah. and cheese sandwiches at the time. Oh. It was really good to get oh. out and get some real food. Yeah. And then come to McShin and, like, go straight into the program, you mm. know. And it was really really helpful just to learn how to live life again i mean i did i think i did 90 days of the intensive program which was a requirement from the judge oh wow but like i needed it <laughs> like i needed every I second needed of it every bit yeah of it. and i complained a lot <laughs> you know and i know i was a pain a pain in the ass <laughs> you know but um I, you know, I needed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm really grateful that it like worked out that way. Um, Cause I just needed to learn how to like live again. And mm-hmm. I don't know that I would have made it to Richmond. Yeah. You know, if I'd had the freedom to get there on my own. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, thank God Joyce came and picked me up. Thank God for Joyce. Mm-hmm. Joycey. She's like Love a staple Joyce. here. She's a staple here. Yeah. She's our director of admission, a director of admission. So she's kind of like that first face that you see and welcomes you to McShane, mm-hmm. walks you through the intake process. And I I can say every single person I've talked to from McShane all have a joy story. Mm-hmm. Like that initial joy story. Yeah. So it's like, you know, she's just she's amazing. She's like a sweet baby angel. We love her. I love her so <laughs> um, much. But let's Mm -hmm. get back to some of, okay, so Winona, you had not heard about recovery at all prior to jail. Have you ever met anyone that maybe was in recovery and you just didn't know? I think I went to a, well, I was forced into a rehab at 13. Oh, wow. You were a baby. But I wasn't thinking it was just another place to be around a whole bunch of people. And I learned a lot of new shit that I probably didn't need to know. Right. Uh, Because everybody else was 17 and 18. Wow. So I was like, all right, well, if this is rehab, then this rehab's not so bad. Right. This isn't terrible. (laughs) This this isn't terrible. (laughs) You know? Yeah. And then my parents took me out like a week later. They're like, oh, no, we want you back home. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. um, Okay. That was great. But after that, I (laughs) I I know a friend of mine tried to get me to go to like NA meetings. I'm like, (laughs) no. No, you weren't interested. No. I was like, nope, mm, that's your issue, not mine. I'm good. Was there any reason as, did it take you a little while to kind of realize that you had a disease and that um, you had substance use disorder? You, did it take you a while to identify as an addict or person? It did. Yeah. Because everything I've done, it was like through the family, it was all normal. Yeah. Like everything was normalized. And so I didn't know anything else. Yeah. I figured everybody did the same things. Right. And if you were normal, you scared the shit out of me. I'm not going to lie. Right. How are you walking around that happy, not being on something? <laughs> <laughs> Something's not right with that. And but I figured out you, you, you can be that happy and not be on something. You really so. can. And yeah, you can like there. deal with even not happy times. You can deal with like really sad yeah. times. I remember that was like one of my things. Like I was, you know, two of my friends, uh, had a recurrence of use and passed away like right the last week of while I was in intensive. Mm -hmm. So their funerals were like right when I got out Mm -hmm. of intensive. And I just remember like one of them, I could not go to the service because I was like, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that Mm -hmm. without using anything. Mm -hmm. Um, The other one, you know, someone went with me to the memorial part of it and I didn't go to everything else. I just knew myself. I said, you know, because 
I started feeling sad and I was like, oh my God, (laughs) what am I supposed to do with these feelings if I can't numb them? What do you mean I have to, I have to feel these? Yeah, um, and learn how to deal with them, and right? Do with them, like, right? Do with them. And and I won't lie. For me, a lot of like the early months were not very happy. Right. Like to me, right. I felt like I went through a lot of grieving of like mm-hmm. my life. I guess of like what I knew. Everything you never uh, dealt with. Yes. While it was happening. Yes. And now you get all of it all at once. Yeah. And it's like surprise. And it's um, and it sucks. It it's sucks. Hard. It really does. Yeah. And but then you get these little moments. I would get these little moments where little I'm like, glimmers. oh wow, like I feel, yeah, that's kind of nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of nice. Yeah, just, the sun is the sun a little brighter today, or the sun feels it good. feels really good. Like uh, I don't remember the sun feeling like this. So it's like mm-hmm. meanwhile I was just always numb, you know. Yeah. So um, here so Laura. I know you. <laughs> I know that this was not your first time. This was not my first <laughs> time trying to find a new way to live. No, I think I had been to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my. Like eight. So uh, nine She's times like, I'd, I'd been, if you include the program I did in jail. Yeah. Nine times i had been to treatment detox rehab uh, uh, all of those um and i never thought that it would ever get better i i would get a little bit of time here and there Mm -hmm. but i just was like white knuckling everything yeah you know um and i just never really gave it the time to get better and to start really experiencing like those sunny days or like, you know, laughing and like really meaning it. And like it, it, I just never thought that that would happen for me. And it did, you know, it's a miracle, but like it really will happen for you if you let it, Mm -hmm. if you let it, if you let it, it. if you let it. And you know, Laura, was this when you came into McShin, from jail mm-hmm. was was McShin the first time you had tried a program straight out of jail and yeah. do you think that that made a difference it made a huge difference it made a huge difference I know like you mentioned earlier you know people it, it was it was probably the first time I had any real sustained clean time mm-hmm. um it wasn't entirely clean you know like yeah. stuff does go make its way into jail. So it wasn't entirely clean, but it was way more time than I had had probably since I was much younger and like started using in the first place. And it kind of, it made it to where like I could be receptive to the help that I was getting once I got to Mixion, you know? Yeah. I I think that jail (laughs) programs are what, I think that's one of the most important tools that we have Mm -hmm. against the disease Mm -hmm. because um, any judges are out there listening, (laughs) um, you know, it's really important for people to realize that a lot of these behaviors that people get in trouble for are all kind of based in their substance use disorder. And the way to combat that is not just continuously locking people up. Now, mind you, you know, I get the little bit of time and it does, I think it probably does help having that time to yourself to like right. maybe get that sustained recovery time. But if there were more places and more counties and cities mm-hmm. that just pushed that narrative of, you know what, this person has been locked up 10 times in the past two mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. all on these charges or possession or simple, you know, probation violations, things like that. When substances are involved, the solution is not to just keep, first of all, using our tax dollars <laughs> to lock them back up, continues over, yeah, and, over, over and over and over, and over, over again. again. It's like a revolving door, mm-hmm. but the the solution is to get them help. Mm-hmm. And 
the big part of that is are those partnerships and those those counties and those judges that will say, hey, you know what? You got to go. I'm going to release you only if you get into a program, mm-hmm. you got to stay for nine months, you got to stay for a year and a half, whatever it is. You got to stay for six months. Right. Um, that's how we're going to stop the recidivism rates. That's how we're going to help people have more success stories like Winona, you know, mm-hmm. um, when they're given that opportunity. And I feel like more people than not will take that opportunity. A, if you know me, if I get into a program, <laughs> I can get out. Right, I'm jail. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely gonna take that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not that people won't be interested. Mm-hmm. And yes, some people might just be doing it to, you know, lessen the time or get out or whatever. The hope is that while they're there mm-hmm. and they're mandated that they see the the hope that there mm-hmm. is you mm-hmm. know for themselves and see the light um and maybe hopefully think of you know try to think of what their life could be like eventually mm-hmm. and Winona to see you shine so bright yeah you know Amazing. it's great because Winona's <laughs> got these kids she's got these sons and she brings them everywhere. She brings them everywhere. So <laughs> every event, they're there. And, you yeah. know, like, they're like teenagers. So it's like, you know, you got to be pretty cool as a mom for your <laughs> kids to think that you're cool. That are teenagers. Okay. Because they can be. That's harsh. That's a that's a tough crowd. You know, it's a tough age. They are a tough crowd. And they love their mama so bad. Mm-hmm. Down bad. Um, It's so great to see you in that role and just see, like how much you love them and they love you Ooh. you know it's like they've been waiting yeah. for that you know yeah. I, I don't care how I saw someone post this in our alumni association um group on Facebook yeah. Mark Catlett shout out Mark um <laughs> he posted you know it doesn't matter how old your kids are I don't care if they're two yeah. five 15 25 30 like they all want this for you yeah your kids mm-hmm. want to see you shine you yeah, know, do. um, and to have two whole years, does it feel any different? Um, I'm still working on everything. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's gotten a lot easier. Yeah. Some days not so easy, but it's yeah. I can deal with it a lot better than I used to. Yeah. Good. So it's not bad. That's amazing. <laughs> And I'm getting my custody of my kids back. Wow. Yeah. After three years. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, and those are the type of things that people need to hear. Mm. Like, if someone, and I want to speak directly to the camera, because if you are in jail right now, if you're Mm -hmm. in prison and jail, it doesn't matter. Um, Or if you're just listening to this at home, in the car, wherever, um, give yourself a chance. That's all you have to do is give yourself a chance. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you're in jail, what 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 else do you have to do? What else do you have to do? Ask maybe ask if there's uh something that you can get into, like a, a drug pod, a recovery pod. Um, or if there's not, you know, you could be that spearhead and maybe start start a group. Um, for people that are like minded. Um, and call, call, call and keep calling. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't, I, I can't emphasize that enough because I used to work at the front desk here, which I feel like a lot of us have had that <laughs> role. Um, it's almost like a rite of passage, you know? Um, but we get jail calls all the time and just keep calling back. Just keep calling back. Keep calling back the closer and closer you get to your date. Um, and I promise you, if if we don't have, if we don't have the bed space available, we are a Recovery Resource Foundation. We will wow. try to connect you um, somewhere because uh, this disease is taking too many lives. And it's it's 2024. It's 2024. Like, let's have a great year. Let's mm-hmm. shine. Let's let's soak up the sun. I mean, there was just an eclipse. Like, I'm feeling very like spiritual and like <laughs> just like okay. tunes in right now. Um, so you know, we want you 
to be part of the fold, to be part of the herd, you know, get in the herd, your herd. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, does anyone have anything else to say as we kind of wrap up in the next couple of minutes or 30 seconds? And just give it a try. You're In it. inspiring. I know. I can't <laughs> short words, short words. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. She's all about her actions and her actions show <laughs> that she's about her recovery. Yeah. What about you, Laura? I don't know, Benny. I can't think of any. <laughs> okay, here, here, here. Here, 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 y'all. Here, y'all. I'm, I'm going to help you out. Let's, let's, let's prompt okay. this. Okay. Okay. If you could. If you could imagine that you were watching this podcast while you're in jail, in these regional jails, what would you want someone to say to you? What would you want to say to yourself? I would tell myself that, um, I would tell myself to just hang in there. It gets better. And, and even if you don't believe it, you just have to hang in there. It gets better. Um, and it, and it's not a lie. Like the miracles of recovery are true. They really happen for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and if it can work for me, it can, there's not a single person out there that, it, that can't mm -hmm. have what I have. Right. You know? Um, and I don't know if I would believe myself saying that, but that's what I would, that's what I would want to be able to tell myself. Yeah. yeah. All right, Winona, your turn. I guess just to have hope. And I was like in Rappahannock and I've seen hope, like hold on, pain ends. I love that. Oh, wow. And it really can, if you believe in yourself and give yourself hope that you can get yourself through that and be with the right people that can help you. Hold on to that hope and keep moving forward. Yeah. I love that. Hold that on, was so in. good. And then she said she didn't have anything to say. <laughs> what? You know, I, I love this. I mean, and I guess my message is, is more, it's more to the people that have the power to seriously change the trajectory of people's lives. Mm -hmm. Um, Give them a chance. Give them a chance to give themselves a chance. Give them the opportunity. Um, whether or not they take it is up to them. Mm -hmm. But it's up to people in positions of power to open those doors and give those opportunities. Um, so, yeah, yeah. This, is, this has been pretty fun, y'all. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell my voice is a little, uh, but uh, so we're going to wrap up here. Uh, I just want to thank you and congratulate you again, Winona, thank for two you. whole years. Um, and thank you so much, Laura, for co-hosting with me today. Yes. Anything uh, for you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, and we'll wrap up. Uh, thanks, y'all, for tuning in. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, <laughs> all right. And um, it's at McShintube if you're listening to this um, and you need to look it up. Mm -hmm. It's at McShintube. Don't forget to hit subscribe um, and be on the lookout for more of our episodes. Thanks, y'all. This is getting heard. Peace. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>